The Wolfpack pick up a win in some Turkey Day hoops on Thanksgiving, and we got Kenton's keys to the big-time UNC matchup coming up on Saturday. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Happy Friday to all. Happy Thanksgiving to all. We certainly hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving with your loved ones. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Quick disclaimer, we're both wearing black turtlenecks, completely unplanned. We jumped on the stream and we instantly laughed at each other that we're wearing the same exact thing. But game recognized game. As game recognized game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to start here on Friday recapping this pack basketball win over Vanderbilt in Vegas. Won by a score of 84 to 78 late, late. On Thursday evening, we're actually broadcasting this after the game, so we're staying up late to get it done. A uh, couple quick takeaways from this game: Dennis Parker Jr. is a dog. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that while he is significantly younger than Brendan Armstrong, I think he's moving towards that grown ass man territory. I, I feel like he's on the way. I we we try to keep this show as clean as possible. We try not to curse, but he's on the way. He's he's starting to kind of get in that mode a little bit of man. This is a bad guy. This is a guy that you don't want uh, to see coming your way. You and him one up, and he's he's definitely moving there. Provided 18 points off the bench, nine boards, had a couple steals, I think a couple blocks. Played some very intense defense. Just love what I'm seeing so far from Dennis Parker Jr. And we've talked about it a couple times already. The sky feels like the absolute limit for this kid because it's just a freshman. He looks so far advanced that over so many previous freshmen we've had come through NC State here, just seems so polished, so refined, so poised, so aggressive, so fearless. Cannot get enough of this kid so far. Hope to see a lot more dog in him here in these next couple games coming up. Another bright spot on Thursday evening was Jaden Taylor, also finished with 18 points. Got off to a little bit of a slow start, but then started to get really cooking there once he started tacking the basket, picked up a couple fouls, hit some free throws. He had a big three-pointer. Jaden Taylor is a guy that we need a lot more consistency from, but when he gets going, he can really carry this team for several minutes at a time. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things I look at when I'm coming out of this game and I'm saying, hey, what are your takeaways here? This dev just won't quit. This depth just will not quit. We don't even have MJ Rice yet. Obviously, we're not expecting a letter from the governor and the AG to get our boys who are ineligible eligible. You know, we love you, Cam Woods. We'll see you when you're eligible. But this this team, every time you think, oh, man, DJ Burns is having a really tough night. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you've got a freshman coming out of nowhere, stepping up big time. You've got Jaden Taylor coming out of nowhere, stepping up big time. This group here is special. And I'll tell you what, if Dennis Parker Jr. continues to improve, Jaden Taylor shows some consistency, that'd be great. But even if that's not the case, the way that this team can give it to you, night to night, who's the guy? You don't know. It's one guy, one night it's this guy, next night it's this guy, next night it's this. It's a really great thing to see. And then on top of that, this isn't just a team that has like a lot of good scores, but nobody to close out a game down the stretch. We have some certified, verified closers on this squad as well. You know, you mentioned DJ Burns, not exactly the night we're used to seeing from DJ, not quite as efficient as he typically is. Still had 13 points, nine boards. My favorite play from DJ of the night was him diving for the ball, knocking it forward for a transition basket. Not not exactly something you're accustomed to seeing DJ dive on the floor for a loose ball, but it goes to the depth. Oh, you got another sign for us <laughs> in a blender. He had him in a blender tonight yeah. on Thanksgiving. But 
again, not exactly the DJ Burns performance we're quite used to, but still scrapping to get it done. And But I think that that's the sign of a mature guy, right? Like the, the immature, when we have players who are not quite there yet mentally, what happens? When they're shot and falling or when whatever they do best is not working, everything else falls apart. They don't know how to give any hustle anymore. They don't know how to give any effort. They don't know how to do all the things. DJ was struggling mildly from the field, struggling mildly from the field. And yet still, what was he doing? Diving after loose balls, showing up in a way for the team that's like, hey, I may not be impacting us positively on the scoreboard, being a, a net positive in terms of, you know, in the box sheet, but I can show up in other ways that are very important. They were bringing heavy doubles his way and all that good stuff to where it's like, all right, he's he's got to get rid of the ball quicker and all that, but he'll get used to it. He'll learn from it and he'll get better from it. So I, I think that the mentality and that play that you're talking about where he's diving for a loose ball that gets us a transition bucket, those are the moments where even though that's not going to go down in the stat sheet, you have to watch the game to see it. It's a moment that tells me this team has something special in, uh, going forward because our leaders and our captains are doing things like that, again, when their shots are not falling. I, th- I thought the Wolfpack defense looked pretty solid tonight as well. I think it, it'll it kind of get lost in the noise of a couple lazy fouls. The fouls in general – were egregious, hilarious even, toward the end of that game, extending it for zero reason. I think you kind of have to look at where the game was played and then look at the spread ahead of the game and then just kind of say, okay, I I see what's going on here. But the fouls were bad. I thought for the most part we played through them to a certain extent. I thought we got a little bit lazy, more so in the first half than the second, but thought they did a good job of playing through regardless. The Wolfpack defense as a whole, though, I was impressed with the intensity. We're not giving up too many easy buckets. I thought everything that Vanderbilt got, they had to work for outside of a couple fouls. But that kind of performance from the defense, not exactly something we're completely accustomed to. This the defense from Keats has not exactly always been the strong suit. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's much, much improved this year, and I think the depth is a big portion of that as well. Absolutely, and I think the biggest thing for me is that we're defending without having to turn teams over. Like in the past, it was if we couldn't turn you over, we're done. We're cooked. We can't stay in front of guys. You know, we didn't have great rim protection. We are finding ways to get stops without turning teams over at a super high volume. And don't get me wrong. It's always great to get those, you know, like they like to call them in football, pick sixes, where it's like, oh, yeah, we, this team is, is we're forcing them to do all the things we want to do. And in this game, we did force turnovers. But even beyond that, when we weren't able to get turnovers, we were still able to get stops. And that, to me, is the important part that I look at and I say, all right, we're going in the right direction defensively. Yeah. So good win, all in all, probably got a lot closer at the end than it needed to. Couple couple things I still need to see cleaned up. I think I need a little bit more aggression on the boards. I thought we gave up too many second chance opportunities for Vandy when really, I mean, if we clean that up, this game is nowhere near as close as it was in the end. And I think the lazy fouls too. And again, in a game like this, it's hard to nitpick because in general, the officiating was abhorrent. But still some of the lazy fouls, a couple from DJ just a slash in the lane, just not needed. And in a in a game of higher importance, those will become more crucial. So continue yeah. to clean those up, move your feet. Lazy feet at times has been a consistent factor as well. But all in all, I'm okay with the win. I think, you know, letting Vandy get a little bit too close at the end. I, I won't say I'm completely happy with the win. It's a good win. It's a power five win. It's a win far away from home. So pleased with the win. I guess I'll leave it there. We'll have to wait and see who we play the winner of. It'll be either be Arizona State or BYU for, I guess, the championship of the Vegas showdown coming up late again on Friday evening. But a win is a win. Wolfpack win in Vegas, 84-78 to 78 over Vanderbilt. We'll be looking forward to who they got next. Up next here, we're going to dive into Kenton's Keys for the UNC game after a quick word from our spot. First sponsor of the day is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience – That's what brings home the winning trophy, but it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 
million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Back here, switching fields over to the gridiron. Still got this big-time matchup with UNC on the way coming up on Saturday night. We're bringing to you Kenton's Keys as we always do. The last set of Kenton's Keys for a while, I guess at least until the bowl game. So make sure you're paying close attention here. Absolutely. Grayson, bring in the graphic. All righty. So the first one offensively, you know how we do this. We always start off with offense, and then we go to defense and special teams. The first one, hit the magic number. The reality is this Wolfpack team's defense is so good that it's not necessary that you, you know, put up 20 or put up 30, 40 points a game. That's not that's not the deal here. The deal here is if you are serviceable offensively, we'll get you the rest of the way. Realistically speaking, how many times have we scored 24 or more points this year and lost that football game? I mean, against Notre Dame is literally the only time that we did that. Our other two losses, had we scored 24 points, those would have been wins. So 24 points is the magic number. Go beat it. Number two, establish your identity. We talked last week, or I tweeted last week, about this team finally gaining an identity, and that identity was we're going to run the ball. We're going to get creative with running the ball. We're going to be tough as nails. And because we are tough as nails in running the ball, that is something that we need to establish early. That's not something I'm like, oh, let's get away from that and see if other things work and then come back to it. No, 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 no. Start off, try to run the ball and see where that goes from there. The last one is stay on schedule, right? So a really big thing about this UNC defense, you know, Grace and I have talked about it already in terms of they have a few stars, a few guys who can get it done at a high level. Everybody else, not so much. Do you know when those few stars get to shine brightest? in third and long situations. When you have the ability to draw up all these types of exotic blitzes with Cedric Gray coming downhill in a hurry, when you have Cayman Rucker coming off the edge in a hurry, that is where you you get that. And you get that in third and long situations. Minimize those, stay on schedule, and we'll get to those 24 points and we'll get ourselves a Wolfpack win. So those are the offensive keys. Grayson, how you feel about them? Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a lot of the same things that have been spoken about all year on here it's not beating yourself it's protecting your quarterback in this case it's going to be brennan armstrong we understand that he was a little sore leaving blacksburg so it will be imperative to keep him clean as possible in this game as well and do what has worked these last couple weeks get the ball to kc get creative in the run game with brennan and kendrick and whoever else might jump in there as well, probably KC, if we're being honest. We've talked about the holes that are in the UNC defense. They ain't that bad, but they ain't that good either. If you continue to hit them in the mouth, they will break. Not bend, they will break. Bring the fight to them. Impose your physicality on them. If you continue to punch them in the mouth, you will be able to get virtually anything you want all night long. Now we'll switch sides over to the defense with Kenton's defensive keys. All righty. So the first thing first is while people talk about Drake May as the guy and all that good stuff, do you know who the leading rusher in the nation is? Well, it's Hampton tied for first. Marion Hampton. That young man is the leading rusher in the net or one of the leading rushers in terms of, again, being tied in terms of rushing yards. You have to take him away. You have to. If you look at the games that they've won and they've had success with in the games, excuse me, that they've lost, it generally is not about stopping their offense. It's just about outscoring. Them. But the reality is I don't feel comfortable with us taking that approach. Let's make this team one dimensional. And that way we can get after uh, Drake may at a high level. When you do that, you'll be just fine. If not, you're going to see a, a much more difficult, much more struggle filled game um, than otherwise then we we would see if we could stop the run. And it, in terms of looking at, well, who stopped the run well, who's done what against this team, I mean, objectively speaking, the reality for this team is they the run sets the table and lets Drake May do what he does at a high level in terms of 
having those long, deep crossers and all those deep balls pop up because you're playing the run. If you get this team in a deficit to where they have to throw the ball, now you can pin your ears back. Now you can come with all those creative dogs to get home. So stop the run, make this team one-dimensional, less than 125 on the ground is a must. Clamping up Tez and Nez, that is the rule here. If you uh, if you do a good job of stopping Tez Walker and Bryson Nesbitt, this offense has little to nothing by way of weapons. Honestly, and I mean this very seriously, if you can find a way to stop Hampton, Walker, Nesbitt, I kid you not, this team will not piss a drop. That is the reality here. Hold these two under 150 yards combined and no more than one TD between the both of them, and I think we do just fine. Here. Last but not least, you've got to fold Drake May like origami. The reality is very simple. No quarterback, I don't care how good you are, likes getting hit in the face. No quarterback, I don't care how good you are, likes folks lighting them up all night long. Oh, my God, there's another helmet under my chin. Oh, my God, there's another guy. That's, that's you know, I got another 300-pounder, 280-pounder laying on top of me. This is fun. I enjoy this. No quarterback likes that. Get home, get home, get home. If these dogs can get home and get us four sacks, we'll be just fine in this game. Grayson, talk, talk to me about the defensive keys. Yeah, I'll work backwards through these. So you have to make Drake May uncomfortable all night long. From the jump, you have to be in his face all night long. You've got to force him into poor decisions. You've got to take away his ability to create. You've got to take away his ability to improvise, to extend a play, because he's going to be certainly looking to do so. And I don't even hate the idea of having Peyton Wilson as a spy on Drake May in this game, because you got to have somebody that can limit him as much as humanly possible. So yeah. Keep an eye on Drake May all night and make his life a living hell. The first and second key almost connect a little bit. So taking away Hampton is probably the most important part of the defensive keys here. He is tied for the nation's lead in rushing yards. He has been an animal for UNC all year long, and he certainly is a tough task to deal with here. And it's almost kind of funny to talk about making UNC one-dimensional because their other dimension is also very good. They are a very dynamic passing attack. And so if you can hold Tez and Nesbitt in check, if you can keep the clamps on them with Aiden White, with Pookie Kennedy, with Shaheen Battle, whoever else in that secondary is going to step up and make a play. Again, like Kenton was mentioning here, they become very limited. They're going to have to force things through the air. They have to get desperate sometimes on the ground. And that's when this defense can really dig in and sink their teeth into this offensive line. The UNC offensive line has really not been anything special this year. They've even struggled at points, sometimes with UVA, with Georgia Tech, at points with Duke. This defense can really tee off if they create enough havoc in the backfield that UNC starts getting desperate to make a play happen, and then that's when the chaos sets in. So I yeah. love the assignment here for Tony Gibson. I love the assignment for the secondary, the defensive line, the linebacking core. I cannot wait to see this defensive matchup. With against Drake May in this UNC offense. Yeah, I thousand percent agree. And I wish we could just add in keys because I want to see some turning over too. I want to see, oh, yeah. you know, taking the ball away too. But obviously you, you got to keep it at three. And I think that these three things are the most important. And I'll tell you what, nine times out of ten, if you're doing those three, you're also taking the ball away. So we'll yes. we'll see how this thing goes. But it, it, the reality is that is what the ball game comes down to, to me. Those are the things that if we do those, we execute with those things, we'll be just fine. If not, eh, it's going to be a long day. If NC State plays NC State football here, the game will stay in our control. If not, if yeah. you stray outside of that, if you start beating yourself, that's where things will get hairy. Again, you do not want to play from behind in this game, not against the UNC offense. If you get behind, we will struggle. So much of the same, get ahead, stay ahead sink your teeth in, and tee off on them all night long. Yeah, and this is the one game of the year where, like, all that sportsmanship nonsense goes out the window. If you're up, keep pouring it on. We got a bowl game next. We Anybody who gets hurt, anything that happens, you got a month to ice up, son. We'll be okay. We'll be perfectly fine. Just keep waxing. Just to, to put – run the score Run the score up if you can, if you get a chance, because those boys in baby blue deserve. Up next, we're going to round out our Friday show with our final thoughts and predictions for this UNC game after a quick word from our sponsors. 
Our second sponsor of the day is Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. If you are in the market for tickets this coming Saturday evening, NC State hosts UNC. It is the big one. It is rivalry week. It is blue versus red. They don't like us. We hate them. And you might still need tickets. Get over to Game Time. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It is the place to find last-minute ticket deals. And with the Game Time Guarantee, this means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less on another site, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, and again, create an account and use redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, L O C. K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, Locked On College, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, rounding out our Friday show, as we always do, with our final thoughts and predictions for this UNC game coming up. Kenton, I'll let you kick this off. How do you see this one going Saturday night? Well, I mean, if you look at this game, you know, I say – NC State has the better everything except receiving core and quarterback. And for that reason, I'm going UNC 28 to 27. I've struggled with this all week. I I truly didn't know if I could get myself to say UNC is going to win this game. Um, I do see some disadvantages. Of course, they do have a stellar quarterback, as painful as that is to say. Their yeah. wide receiving core is better. Their running back is better far and away we have a much better defense and that is something that we will certainly have to lean on in this game we did it against clemson we did against miami they have showed out at wake forest they showed out for the majority of the game at virginia tech you have to keep that momentum rolling you've got to do everything that has put you in this position to win nine games and beyond we've come this far and we didn't come this far just to come this far the turnaround this season has been nothing short of spectacular. I love NC State at home in this game. I love NC State in a night game in this game. Carter Finley is going to be unlike anything we've seen probably in a couple years now. This atmosphere on Saturday night is going to top anything you've seen. I'd go as far as to say since like the Lamar Jackson game in 2017. I'm expecting that type of atmosphere in Carter Finley. So I told you, I didn't know if I could do this. The truth is I can't. So my final score is the other team 30 NC state 24. Fair enough. Fair enough. Before we get out of here on Friday, also need to shout out pack women's basketball. They're down in the Virgin islands this week for feast week, put the absolute beats on Kentucky in game one also took place on Thanksgiving. I believe they beat them by 29 or 30. Absolute domination. And it's so crazy to see how this team is playing after this UConn game. It seems like they're almost getting better and better and better. Their AP ranking has reflected that. They're now up to 10. This team seemingly has no limit. The yeah. the the depth, the, we've talked so much about the depth on the men's team. The depth on the women's team has also been very evident this year. They can cycle in girls in and out. They can move the ball around. They can play good defense. They can hustle, get up and down the floor. Been very, very impressed with what I've seen so far and a very impressive win for their first game down in the Virgin Islands. So for context and reference on how good this this game was for uh, the pack, our bench put up 28 points in total, right? Kentucky starters... They're starters now. This is not their bench. 29. 29. Our bench was just barely outscored by their starters. That is how well this game went for the pack. Everybody showed up. Everybody chipped in. Complete and utter domination from start to finish. This was a game where you can't look back and say anything but, man, 
It's it's seeming like this team is doing belt to behind season. It's seeming like we're starting to get that old mojo and swagger back that we had a few years ago. Up next on the docket for the Lady Pack, they have Cincinnati on Friday, and then they have a showdown with number three Colorado down in the Virgin Islands. So that will be something to keep your eye on. They had a massive win against number two UConn. Can they also take out number three Colorado? Absolutely, I I couldn't agree more. You know, this is a this is a Colorado team that, I mean, right now everybody's super geeked on. They have the best win in the country in terms of beating LSU and all that. Let's see what the pack can get done against this team because again, I've talked about the fact that the the difference between the pack team that we saw last year and the the teams that we saw that were led by Liz Kinane, Kai Crutchfield, Kayla Jones, and Randy Perez, it wasn't the highs. It was the consistency or lack thereof. Can this team be consistent in competing at that top level and beating top teams? Or is it like, hey, that was a one-off. Be prepared for, you know, that's just not the norm we should expect here. Or, you know, it could be the Colorado's better on that day. Who knows? But it's it's this is a great early season test coming up. Also, be sure to look out for our Locked On crossover. We are talking with Isaac Shade of Locked On Heels. That will release on Saturday morning. I'll be sure to put that out on Twitter and on YouTube as well. So keep your eye out for that. That will do it for us here on Friday. As always, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for tuning in with us here on Friday. Be sure to mash that like button. Get your comments in the comment box. I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of those. Mash that subscribe button now on our climb up to 1,000 and beyond. Another exciting week for Wolfpack Sports. I love Feast Week. I'm all over college basketball this week. We've got Rivalry Week in football. So many more wins to celebrate, hopefully. And as always, we're sure to be on top of it all here with Locked On Wolfpack. Thank you all for tuning in. Until tomorrow, again, catch us on Saturday. Go Pack. Go Pack.